Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch where we bring you major news developments from around the world. Our headlines, thousands of poor and working class people face forced evictions in Pakistan. NATO leaders take stance against China and Russia in summit communique. Women killed after car driver rams car into a protest at police killing against police killing in the US. And in our video section we take a look at the indigenous led struggle against the Enbridge Line 3 pipeline. In our first story we go to Pakistan where 50,000 people in the city of Karachi are facing forced evictions. Local authorities are in the process of demolishing houses along the Orangi and Gujar Nala storm drains. The Supreme Court had ordered the removal of encroachments along the drains following severe flooding in the city in 2020. However, poor and working class residents have argued that district officials have deliberately misinterpreted the order. As a result, houses leased to these families by the local municipal authorities have been classified as encroachments. The so-called anti-encroachment drive began in February putting 21,000 children at risk of homelessness. The Sindh government is also planning to construct a 30 feet wide road along the storm drains. Affected families will be paid a compensation of around $128 a month for 2 years. Moreover, delays in public housing means that affected families are forced to live in the rubble. Since then, activists and residents have been mobilizing as part of the Karachi Bata Bachao Tehreek. The movement has obtained over 100 stay orders against the demolitions. Its leader Fiza Qureshi has stated that the Supreme Court has directed authorities to provide alternative housing. However, the affected families have not been resettled. The court also heard appeals against the demolitions on June 14th. However, Chief Justice Gulzar Ahmed revoked the stay orders and the demolitions will now proceed. Meanwhile, activists and residents gathered outside the court to protest on Monday. KBT has also linked the eviction to the World Bank's 100 million dollar sweep project in the area. The bank has claimed that it is not connected to or financing the demolitions. However, activists have pointed out that cleaning of drains under sweep and by extension the funding of this cleanup cleanup cannot take place without the demolitions. Local residents have also stated that the authorities are carrying out demolition in the bank's name. In our next story, NATO leaders have declared that China poses a systemic challenge to the international order. Leaders of the military alliance's 30 member states met in Brussels on June 14th. The post summit communique released on Monday takes an anti-China stance pursued by US President Joe Biden. He has urged NATO members to stand up to Beijing on issues including military power and trade. The communique also accused the country of rapidly expanding its nuclear arsenal and being opaque in its military modernization. NATO leaders have also pointed to China's military cooperation with Russia in the Euro-Atlantic region. They also accused Russia of intensifying so-called hybrid actions including interference in elections. Speaking at a press conference, President Biden said that both countries were trying to split the transatlantic alliance. NATO members have also expanded Article 5 or collective defense to include responses to space and cyber attacks. Meanwhile, hundreds of anti-imperialist activists held protests in the Albertina Square in Brussels on June 13th. They condemned NATO for escalating tensions with Russia and China in what is being called a new Cold War. The statements made at the NATO summit follow a day after the G7 released its own joint communique. It also called for collective approaches to countering China's policies. It included statements on human rights in Xinjiang and Hong Kong as well as the origin of COVID-19. China denounces communique as slander and call for non-interference in internal affairs. In our next story we go to the city of Minneapolis in the US. Diona Marie Knatek was killed after a man rammed his jeep into a parked car on June 13th. Her car was blocking the street to protect a protest against a recent police killing. Shortly after 11:30 p.m. the car sped into the protesters injuring four people including her. She was pronounced dead at the hospital. People in Minneapolis have been protesting the killing of Winston Smith Jr. He was shot multiple times by US Marshals on June 3rd. The US Marshals Fugitive Task Force stated that they were trying to arrest him for a felony firearms violation. Authorities have claimed that Smith fired a gun from inside his car and they found spent cartridges. However, a 27-year-old woman present with him at the time has stated that she never saw him with a gun. Authorities have claimed that there is no police body camera footage of the incident. Smith's death follows shortly after the police murders of George Floyd in 2020. and Dante Wright in April. Protesters gathered near the parking ramp where Smith was killed in Minneapolis's uptown area on Sunday. Activist Donald Hooker Jr stated that the car sped up as it lost got closer to the protesters. He said that it was an attack and it was on purpose. After the crash the driver got out and tried to escape. However, he was apprehended by the protesters and turned over to the police. This contradicts the police claim that the driver was somehow injured by the protesters. Police reportedly also threatened protesters with mace, rubber bullets and arrests. People are demanding evidence in the killing of Winston Smith Jr. Meanwhile, a march and a rally for Dion Aknajek was also held on Monday. Continuing with the US for our final story, we take a look at the ongoing anti-pipeline protests. Indigenous communities and climate activists have been struggling against the cross-border oil pipelines for years. In a landmark victory, the Keystone XL project was officially terminated on June 9th. Activists are now intensifying their struggles against the Dakota Access Pipeline and the Enbridge Pipeline. 
Hundreds of people have been arrested while protesting the company's Line 3 project in Minnesota. Here's a video feature on the protests. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back tomorrow with more news from around the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch.